Welcome, Chosen One. What's up, aceholes? Welcome to another Gwent video, although a little bit different. I've, uh, I've tried like four, four or five times this week to make a video, a gameplay video, you know, featuring a variety of decks. Some very meme -y, others hopefully not that meme -y. I wouldn't say they are. But uh, it's, it's not gone well. And uh, that's pretty much exclusively due to the fact that this meta is maybe the most boring meta that I can remember. Now, you know, keep in mind, I did not play during the the time when uh, when before Erendite got nerfed, like like right after Forgotten Treasures, you know, I, I came back after Erendite was nerfed to ten provisions, and yeah, those types of decks weren't as prevalent. So maybe if you played during that time, you you maybe think that was worse. Uh, I know that was a pretty bad time for the game. Uh, for for a lot of the same reasons why I think this particular meta is is so terrible but yeah I've, I've tried like four or five times to to record videos uh, it's just not worked out uh, one of those videos was you know a uh, uh, just an ultimate meme video where you know, I recorded for over three and a half hours just trying to get one thing to work and when that includes a lot of forfeits like like I had there's a, a very specific opening hand I had to get and most of the time I didn't get it so I just forfeit and you know moved on so so during you know three and a half hours of doing that I went through dozens of matches and almost every single one was you know one of like one of three or four Renfrey decks and then the occasional pirates deck. Uh, there are a couple of Keltellas, which is also a little bit relevant here, and Kitty Spam. But it, it was just so much Renfrey, so much Nilfgaard Renfrey decks, but also hand buff, obviously. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of a bummer to, to start this video out on, but uh, I mean, as you can probably tell by the, the title and thumbnail, this video is not intended to be fun and entertaining it's it's more of a discussion type of thing as i can't seem to get a gameplay video going uh, don't worry i'll keep trying but uh since i can't seem to get one going right now i wanted to move on to the next phase of you know me doing gwent videos again and that is not limiting myself to gameplay because you know i like i love gwent i, I love playing gwent when the game is not in such a shit state um, you know, but I'm, I'm not a super, super amazing deck builder who comes up with new decks all the times. And it's hard to find inspiration in other people's decks because so much of what I find when I try to look up decks, it's just like the same meta shit over and over again. So it's hard to get inspiration. So I do want to move into mixing up a little bit, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll try to get gameplay videos out as much as I can. That's priority number one. But sometimes there will be topics I want to discuss with you guys, all Gwent related. And there will also be some, maybe some custom card stuff. I, uh, uh, even when I was gone from, from uh, YouTube for like six months, I, I still did a lot of like custom reworks of cards and, and stuff like that. Uh, one of which we will actually get into today. And uh, you know, speaking of getting into today, let's get into today's video, all right? No more exposition. Defenders. And I'm not talking about Mockham Defender. You know what? Let's do this just so he won't be on the screen. I, I He's okay. Uh, he's not a problem here. Defender. Each faction has one. If you... Are, if you somehow are blessed with not even knowing what a defender does... It's very nice that uh, 
the tooltip is blocked by the camera. But uh, basically, if you have a defender on a row, the opponent cannot target any other units on that row. Defender is a status, so it has to be purified. It cannot be locked. It has to be purified. Now, defenders came during the Iron Judgment expansion, and as we can see from the card set list here, which is chronological, Iron Judgment was a few expansions ago, sort of in the middle here. And uh, yeah, it was it was an okay expansion. This was before card effects were were particularly interesting. But uh, it brought armor back into the game, which is a mechanic that sh I really don't know why they took out for the rework of Gwent and uh, waited like a year to put back in. Just realized I forgot to close the window. We got to do that so uh, outside people don't annoy us. It brought back armor, which was great. It brought back it brought in defenders which at the time was something the community wanted. People had actually been asking for defenders, uh, you know, basing it off of, is it taunt, the keyword in Hearthstone, which is basically the same thing. Um, you know, I, I am more familiar with it from uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, where it's called guard, where it's basically, yes, you have to target the guard units before you can target the others. And we wanted this because engines, you know, you know, cards, units that generated value over time were in a very bad spot. Uh, and where a lot of them were like just unplayable because you couldn't stick them on the board. Uh, removal was just too efficient at the time. It, it, yeah, but there was just no point in playing uh, most engines because it was just too hard to stick them on the board and they were just so low value if you couldn't stick them on the board that it was just there was no point removal was too efficient and you know all the cards that were considered fun back then were it you couldn't play them you could not play them so people asked for defenders and uh, i mean we gotta say cdpr delivered they uh, sure as hell delivered. Uh, too bad that uh, it's a decision that I believe has been way more harmful to the game than beneficial. Defenders don't really defend engines. You know, like just, just you know, fun little engines that you just want to stick on the board. Defenders aren't used for this anymore. And I think part of the reason for this is that removal has gotten a lot worse, generally speaking. And I'm talking about, you know, when you, when you look at bronze engines in particular, like they're so well statted that removal of the same cost is not even enough to kill them. Uh, there are so many four provision engines, including the newly buffed uh, Dryad Fledgling, which starts at five base power. And when you look at removal at four provisions, it's only doing four damage. Like, you can't even trade evenly on provisions with, uh, with engines. And uh, if you have to spend five provision removal to remove a four provision engine, like, that's, that's garbage. That's... You know, you keep making trades like that, you're gonna lose. And it, like, it's really taking this direction where I feel like, like I don't know if it's intentional. Like, are they doing it just to make these engines playable uh, without really, yeah, without any disregard for for the the removal cards being playable? Because I mean, nobody likes removal anyway, right? It's just uh, it's boring, huh? Um, or is it intentional? Because th there is a way they could do this. And I I haven't seen any clear signs that they are going this direction. So I really can't say for certain. 
But one thing like you could do is that like four provision engines and maybe five provision engines just aren't meant to be killed. Except by maybe like certain cards, like uh, like Cursed Toad. Or Frog Prince, is that what it's called? Where is he? Toad Prince. You know, consume a unit with four or less power. Like, this could eat like a Cat Witcher, you know, and be a uh, an 11 for 8, and the opponent played a 5 for 5. So you get six more points for three more provisions. Like, like that's good. Like, like points to provisions ratio, Toad Prince is an efficient card at removing, you know, a, a five provision engine. Uh, even a four provision engine, I think, is still is still fair. You know, we have a similar card. This is at seven provisions. We have a lot of similar cards, but, you know, staying within the Monsters Faction and also it being one of the more playable of this type. Add a Striga. You know, Dominance. If you get the Dominance, you deal the four damage and you kill, let's say, a Cat Witcher again. You play nine for seven, that kills their five for five. Okay, two more provisions, but four more points. Uh, that's still pretty efficient. Because, you know, one provision doesn't equal one point. I don't think we're quite at the point where one provision equals two points. But maybe somewhere in the middle. So, two more provisions, but four more points. Seems fair. Uh, and against, you know, if you're, if you're not getting removal value from the four damage, then a nine for seven is not good. Like, it's not, it's not game-losingly bad, as I tend to say. But uh, it's... It's not good. It's, it's below point slam value, but that's because it's removal. It should be below point slam value, but against greedier cards, it should play for above point slam value. That's kind of how it works. So, uh, so th those are some, some good examples of, of how those cheaper engines could be dealt with in an efficient way, provisions to points wise. But Using five provision removal to kill a five provision engine, when is that ever worth it? The same with fours and fours, even six and sixes. Uh, you know, look, look at something like Mastercrafted Spear, right? It's six provisions, deals six damage, and then you have that neat little thing of excess damage being dealt to another unit, so you'll always get six points, even if you kill a Cat Witcher. Right? You pay one more provision, but you also get one more point. So it's a little bit of an inefficient trade because one provision should e equal more than one point. But it's it's still better than, you know, an Alcer's, not an Alcer's Thunder, a, a Giga Scorpion Decoction, where you're only getting four points of damage to kill a card that was worth five points for one less provision, right? So there are. You know, but then again, a Mastercraft Spear can kill a Damien de la Tour, which is a greedy 11 provision card. So, you know, removal is in a, in a kind of a, a wonky space. Like, if, if you disregard just pure destroy effects or something like Heat Wave, obviously Heat Wave can kill whatever you want. But it's a 10 provision special card. I think Heatwave is perfectly fair, uh, but it's it's like one of the few removal cards that I feel are actually playable, like consistently playable. Like look at Boiling Oil. Like you know, we sometimes put it in our in our, in our decks just to not brick John Natalis, you know, just to trigger some resupply. It's good in it's good in Siege because you know. You have a reinforced ballista, you ping, you deal five damage, you get the resupply and you can ping again. Like combining effects. But see, this is still only worth it if you kill something more expensive. By combining pings and your pure damage cards, you can kill something way more expensive. And that's how removal should get value. 
at least one of the ways. And uh, I don't know, I, I just don't feel like most removal cards are consistent enough in this regard. And that brings us back to defenders. God, I I was just going to talk about defenders, but I guess this is a defenders slash the state of removal video. And I guess that makes sense because they do go hand in hand. But, you know, with removal being the way it is, and maybe this is partially because of defenders, but, like, defenders just aren't used to protect... You know, your normal engines. Like, people aren't really playing Donamir to protect their siege engines. Right? Because, I mean, the siege engines are just... I mean, they're valuable enough on their own. If they get removed, you usually don't really lose anything on that trade, you know? So why would you play a 7 for 9? Sure, you could use it to uh, protect your siege. But, like, honestly... Siege costs 14. And... Like, if they heat wave it, they spend 10 provisions on 0 points. You spend 14 provisions on at least 4 points, but it could be more. It could be more if you get pings with your Ballista. No uh, trebuchet. You know, you get some points there. Uh, you have an extra Siege engine for... If you play Bombardment. So, like, the, the trade there is is so, so, I mean, I think it's a balanced trade. I think it's very fair. But it's like, th th there's not even a point to playing Donamir to try to prevent this trade. Because the trade itself isn't really that bad. Um, I mean, you definitely could do it. And if Donimir does eat the heat wave, so that your siege doesn't, you're gaining a lot from that. Here's the thing, Donimir, I I don't know when I saw Donimir last. Uh, Figus was never relevant before or after rework. Azar Javed. I mean, Syndicate stopped playing him for the longest time, and now they're really just bringing him back because. Not so much because of the defender status, but because, like, getting up to three Salamander units is pretty good. Uh, with uh, some recent additions, recent changes and such. And, obviously, with the... What's it called? What is it called? The, the artifact that, that boosts... Boost this. Conjurer's Candle. With, uh, with Conjurer's Candle, you're, uh, like, like, these two Scarabs can very easily just become two actual defenders. So, uh, I've, I've started to see him a little bit lately, but, uh, not so much. Fion, Fion used to be everywhere. I, I don't see him anymore. And the last time I did see him, and now... We're getting into the meat of the video. Almost 20 minutes into it. Where I last remember consistently seeing Fion was probably defending Colgrim. Yeah. And what does Colgrim have in common with uh, a lot of cards that defenders are being used for? If you don't answer him, he is worth a buttload of points for 9 provisions. If you do answer him, there's a good chance you'll win. Colgrim is not, not the most outrageous example, but still a pretty good example of a answer or lose card. And Gwent has been getting a lot more of these cards. In the more recent card drops. Covenant of Steel. I love Skellige. And as far as the defenders go, this is probably my favorite just because of the uh, the armor engine that it can become. I still hate the card. Like so much. Because this 
is really only used... I mean, some people use it to protect Gedaneath. I don't. Because again, you know, I've played a lot of Alchemy on this channel without Defender. And whenever my Gedaneath gets heatwaved, I don't care. Like, I actually don't care. Because just the Crow Clan Preacher that I have left of the scenario. That's more than enough to make up for the trait there, the provision trait. And if they can't if they can't also answer that, and by at this point I'm developing another engine. Probably another preacher. Like that it's gonna be a, worth a lot of points. So so I don't even bother playing Covenant to Steel. Because I, there's not not really a point. But uh, people are playing it, and uh, it's it's Ursine Ritual, it's Melusine and Sigvald. <laughs> you know what those two cards have in common? If you don't answer them, there's a really good chance you'll lose. An unanswered Sigvald is disgusting. An unanswered Melusine. Can get so huge and be so much carryover that it makes me want to puke. And uh, you know, Skellige and monsters like these are the most prevalent defenders. And uh, here's why: they can be resurrected, they can be brought back. Covenant of Steel, they can Sigrifus write it back, they can Fukusha it back. Hmm. <laughs> what, what, what? What's this? I don't know. But they can bring that back. And still have a res for their Melusine or Sigvald. It's just, just a lot of bringing back, you know? Just bringing it back. And, you know, I look at Melusine, I look at Sigvald. I compare them to the removal that would be necessary, required, to deal with them. And it, it, it's perfectly fair. If, if, if I play Melusine and my opponent heat waves it, okay. Why not? Why should... Why should... I mean, that should be encouraged. I mean, I, I have different issues with Melusine. I think I still, I still think there's there was some problems with her design. But if it hadn't been for... Defenders just always getting in the way when trying to deal with these uh, these dangerous cards. I wouldn't have as much of an issue with it. Like if if I always had the option of heat waving that Melusine. Perfect, perfect, and even trade on provisions uh, with the right setup. They didn't even lose points from her her damaging adjacent units. It could have gained points even. Perfectly fair trade. I mean, what else can kill Melusine? Uh, Tesha Mutna Sword. I loved the rework for Tesha Mutna Sword. And, uh, you know, this could kill Melusine. Yes, for three provisions less. But, I mean, it's a dedicated removal card. It only gets value. I mean, th this, this can get value, like... On like really big units with a lot of statuses but then it's like then it's just a toll punish you know it's a removal card it gets value when it can remove things and then there are so many things where the card underperforms like crazy and, and that's where removal cards fit into the triangle of point slam greed removal if you kill melody and then we have Sigvald, right? Just let me lock him. Why shouldn't I be able to lock him? His effect is insane. If, if, if you're going to insist on keeping that effect in the game, at least let me lock the damn bastard. And then, if they want to play Mahakam Ale to unlock him and boost him by 5. Okay. 
fine. You played a tech card against my tech card. At least then I can feel like they've at least somewhat earned it. But if, if I had to spend... You know, like... Like, a lot of the cards you can use to counter Sigvald... Also... Can be necessary to counter a defender. So, what if I have to waste them on the defender? Well, then... Sigvald just gets a free pass. And he can be rezzed. If I don't banish him, he can be resurrected. That's nice. Like, I just... And it, I'll probably get back to this too, but I just... It, it's not just that I feel defenders are unhealthy. You know, they're only protecting... Like, like, really dangerous answer or loose cards. But, like... Even, even if you want to... Even if you don't want to go as negative as I'm being here. Like, still... They don't add anything to the game. There's nothing fun about this. Like, like back when I actually used to play Defenders every now and then, it was never fun. And there's really nothing interesting about it. It just, it forces everyone to include the same tech cards in every deck if they want any chance to get a consistent win rate. And, you know, I, I do want to clarify. Yes, I often choose not to play tech cards. And that's not why I have a problem with this. Sure, if I put a Pelor in every deck, if I put a Scrawl in every deck, I would have less issues against these decks. But, I mean, part of the reason that I'm choosing deliberately not to play the tech cards is because I, I just, I, I hate the idea that we have to play them. That we are being forced to play them because of these really binary decks that demand them. You know, like if you know, if if we didn't have defenders, right? And, and you know, Melusine was a thing. Like I wouldn't mind playing a squirrel to banish it in the graveyard. That's not a problem. But I don't, I don't want to feel forced to do that. And I especially don't want to feel forced to play Pellar. Squirrel, I feel like, consistently has more options because of uh, Echo cards and such. But Pellar, sometimes, is just awful. Um, but, I mean, these, these are like four provision, four power tech cards. I think they're, they're well balanced. I think they're in a pretty healthy spot in terms of... You know, just their own power level. I just don't like that I... You know, every deck I click into on PlayGwent.com looking for, you know, looking for inspiration. I just see a pal around a squirrel and a heat wave and so on. And, you know, Cave Troll, like, currently being used with, uh, you know, Sir Scratch a lot. Just, uh, used, you know, for an incredibly binary deck that people are really, really hating right now. It's also really prevalent with uh, Keltalis, a deck that's not as hated, but it can also be incredibly binary. And honestly, if Cave Troll wasn't in the mix, and at least if you couldn't resurrect it with Witch's Sabbath, then I think Keltalis would have been, you know, not so bad. And maybe Keltalis herself could get a buff. Maybe it wouldn't have to cost 12 provisions. Because the deck would, uh, wouldn't be as, as dangerous without just a shit ton of defenders. You know? And you know, b before I uh, before I try to end this, try to end this, uh, end the video. I just want to reiterate. 
and repeat myself a little bit. Even if you don't want to go down this negative route that I'm taking of, oh, defenders are bad, they're toxic, they're unhealthy. Like, there's no, there's no positive way to go. Like, at, at best, you could go neutral with it and just be like, yeah, I don't care. Whatever, they're cards. All cards are cards, you know, and I play cards, you play cards. But I, I don't really, I don't feel like there's anything fun about this. Uh, they don't support any, any fun play styles. I know that's subjective. I know there are people who love playing Self Wound and Keltullus and Kitty Spam. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say that my opinion is the same opinion as the majority of opinions. I'm just saying this is how I feel. And I've seen a lot of people feel the same way. A lot of people. Uh, you know, no, no way can I say that the majority of people feel this way. I just, I've seen a lot of people feel this way. And therefore, it's an opinion that I feel should be discussed. So, what do I want? I just want all defenders gone. Honestly, I would like the game more if defender just did, didn't exist. If, if one legendary card per faction wasn't wasted on pretty much the same effect. Like, there are differences, but they're effectively the same card. Just taking up six slots. And I feel... I want it gone. But if, if they desperately want Defender in the game, and they, they just really think that Defender should be in the game, but maybe in a different way, I have a suggestion. You know, I've made a, a custom Defender that... You know, we'll, it's just it's one neutral Defender. So all of these cards on screen right now, reworked them into cool legendary cards for each faction with unique abilities, just really cool, really fun. And just have this one neutral Defender. And uh, I, I chose uh, Grigoire. Uh, just because he, he looks like a, a defending bastard, right? And uh, he is in a desperate need of a rework anyway. And, uh... Yeah, I just want to talk about the numbers on him real quick. Ten provisions. Why? Well, as a neutral card, he cannot be revived by Sigrifus Rite, Fukusia, Witch's Sabbath. And as a ten provision card... He can also not be revived by Renew. I know, I mean... I mean, Renew is in need of a buff. I want Renew to be buffed. I think the, the 9 provision cap should be kept. But, uh, you know, maybe the card doesn't have to cost 12, you know. And you can't Blue Dream your opponent's defender in this case. It's just, I, I really want it to be just a one and done thing. If Nilfgaard wants to use a Sire to shuffle it back into the deck, you know what, that's fine. If Lippy players want to Lippy it back, that's fine. But this cannot be resurrected by traditional means. At all. Uh, something else. The 8 power. Obviously, by increasing the provisions, I felt it was fair to also increase the power. You know, like, I don't want it to, to be a card that just feels terrible. If it gets countered in any way. So we're, we're, keep, we're going to 8 power. But we're keeping it at 2 armor. One thing that I re really don't like. About the current design of defenders. Is how difficult they are to get through. Like if you have to actually get through them with damage. It's just, it's such a slog. Like, so much armor and shields and, you know, it's... Like, like a 2 armor is fine. Like, it's an 8 for 10. And if you have to get through it with damage, then it's effectively a 10 for 10. I think that's fine. Like, Cave Troll requiring 11 damage to get through, it's just... It's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, but, you know, one more thing, like the 2 armor combined with the 8 power. This is very deliberate. This defender 
dies to Tesha Mutna's sword. Because the sword will deal 10 damage because it has one status, defender. So this dies to Tesha Mutna's sword. He trades evenly with Heatwave. And I just, I think... You know, like it, it's not like it, it dies to Geralt of Rivia. I didn't put it at 9. But uh, you could do that too. But I mean, this is just one suggestion. And, and alongside this defender, I would really like Devotion to be, you know, just buffed even more. Just, just so, like, like, like if, if Defender desperately has to exist, I would much rather have it just as this one neutral 10 provision card. And I want just more incentives to not play Defender, to not play Oniromancy, to not play Heatwave. Just uh, give, give factions, you know, more options. Uh, more devotion options. We'll see, right? You know who knows. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's not like defenders being devotion friendly has been, you know, a, a big issue at all. I just feel like if if they do buff devotion more, and you know, playing without neutral cards becomes a very viable strategy for all factions then maybe just a good neutral defender could actually be kind of interesting i'm just saying i'm just saying all right that took way longer than i thought it would but uh, hopefully you enjoy it i mean i'm sure if, if you watch this far then you're probably one of those people who just really enjoy listening to me talk and I appreciate you for that. You're, you're pretty awesome if you if you did that. Yeah. I I think I'm done. I mean, sorry for rambling for so long. It's just I've been thinking about this for for literally months, and I've been wanting to make a video about it. But you know, I wanted to prioritize gameplay videos just to really get back into things. But uh, I do want to do some discussions going forward. So if you do have any topics that you would like me to discuss. Uh, it doesn't have to be issues with the game. You know, it could just be, you know, oh, what is your favorite card for each faction? And I could do a video about that. You know, like, I want to keep it Gwent related because I get it. This is a Gwent channel. And you know what? I don't mind that. You want to see Gwent? I want to make Gwent content. I don't want to make the game Gwent. Because that seems hard. But anything Gwent related. Be it gameplay, deck guides, discussions, custom cards, anything you want to see, let me know. I'll try to get around to it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you again, hopefully, for gameplay next time. I can't guarantee anything because, like I said, this meta sucks. Like, it really sucks. In my opinion. All right. But I do hope to see you again soon. Until then, have a good one. Bye. Wrong hand.